Right, we are off. Oh my goodness, look at you two. There's thousands of fleas on this poor dog. I'm breaking my heart, mate. Right now, there are dogs that need help. Can't stay like that. She's scratching all the time. And there are heroes that are dedicated to saving them. That dog cannot stay in the house. He's certainly a little fighter, this one. Transforming their lives. Let's get the clip as a please. Without the surgery, she may not make it through this year. It really is going to be a lifesaver for her. Finding them forever homes. Sit. Oh. So you get the dog you need. So. Yep, we needed him. The precious boy. And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. And to see them like this is just amazing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are the dog rescuers. I love my dog. <laughs>
We've got no bowls, water, no food. It's just disgusting, isn't it? They wouldn't survive the winter like that. And they're terrified. Helen and Matt must approach carefully to keep Turner and Hooch as calm as possible. He's thinking about it. He is. He's just a bit scared. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, then. Come on. He's on the bleed. Come on, sweetheart. Hello. Hello. I'll get that one. Hey, yeah. All those scars on his head yeah, he's as well. Yeah, on the top of his head. Terrible scars. They've been fighting over food, possibly. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Now, Matt needs to get anxious Hooch safely on a lead. Look, come on. Hello. Come on. We've got the brother. He's fine, look. Come on, sweetheart, eh? You all right, Matt? Yeah, okay. Come on, yeah. no, oh, good boy! On now. That's it! There you go. We're getting out of here, guys. Put a bit of a spare on, then. Come, Come on. on, mate. Yeah. We've got a nice little bed for you. Some food. We'll take them to the vet and have a proper look at them. And give them some nice food and get them warm. Boy, you only just fit. You only just fit. It's all right. You're a good boy. Weight loss can be a symptom of an underlying illness. Fingers crossed, it's just food these two need. All right, next stop is the vets. <laughs> Back in the northwest, Abandoned brothers, Turner and Hooch, have been taken to Salford Animal Hospital. They're both desperately underweight. Is he all right? I'll get mine out. Helen needs to make sure there's no underlying medical reason for their condition. Come on, then. Your brother's here. Come on. Here's your bro. Come on. Here's your bro. You're looking for food. First up, for vet Vanessa Whitfield, is the bigger of the two brothers. So which is this one? This is Hooch. The body condition score is very, very poor. Skull prominence is there, all his spinal prominence, his ribs, his shoulders, his, his shoulders here, clearly visible, and his hip bones are clearly, clearly visible. We mark them out of nine, where nine is the fattest dog you've ever seen and one is, is very, very, very thin to emaciation, and I think we can say he's in one. He's lost a lot of muscle mass. And Turner's condition isn't much better. Hello. I think we'll look a little bit more forthcoming than your friend. Okay, good dog. He's a smaller dog. He's not actually as thin, as quite as thin as the other one. Right. Um, reasonable, but we, I mean, he's reverging on a one. Yeah, this one, again, is, is considerably underweight. How long do you think it would take for dogs to um, receive no food at all to no get If they receive condition? no food at all, they'd become into this state within um, 10 to 14 days. Mm -hmm. But if they're given small amounts of food, it can take from weeks even to a couple of months. Depends on the amount of food, but complete starvation, the dog's only dead within two weeks. Right. It sounds as though Helen rescued them just in time. You've been very good. Gentle giants, aren't you? Mm -hmm. But before these two get a much-deserved meal, Vanessa needs to take a blood sample to make sure it's only a lack of food that's causing their weight loss. Oh, we do get stressful. Oh, dear. All right, lad. Although Hooch isn't so convinced. OK, OK. Oh, what are you doing? Where are you off to? You mean now he's silly sausage? You can't be like that. <laughs> he's sulking. Not surprised. What a traumatic day for him. It's terrible. You can have some food in a minute. <laughs> he's just so fed up with this. Yeah. Come on then, let's get that neck up oh, and then we're all done. Come on then. Good lad. Now for something he will enjoy. Dinner time. Are you ready? Because this isn't gonna this is gonna go at once. He's gonna grab, <laughs> grab me out of my hand. Yeah. yeah. Here you go. Quick, 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 what's this? 
Ooh, lovely. And what's that? <laughs> yeah, I think we can certainly say it was hungry, oh. can't we? <laughs> Starving. Oh. You can only give him a small amount of food because if he has been truly starved for a number of days, if you give them too much food, it can make them really, really ill. Yeah. He's just yeah. going to be on a third of a tin six times a day. Six times a day. Yeah, and then right. we'll put him onto the puppy complete four times daily then. <laughs> Hooch! <laughs> hey. Oh, isn't that nice? Don't think the bowl's edible, Hooch. With Turner's bloods also taken, okay. he gets the chow down too. Is he ready for his lunch? Yeah, he's ready. There you go. There you go. A bit more refined than his brother. A little bit, yeah, <laughs> just a tad. A bit more etiquette. Yeah. Um, the most likely explanation is they haven't been given enough food, you know, but we want to rule out there's not an underlying disease. So that's why we're doing the tests, and then we're going to put them on a careful refeeding programme. I bet you they'll be better in two to three weeks. Now that Turner and Hooch are safe, Helen can focus on tracking down their owner and find out why they were left a waste away. Bye-bye. As far as I'm concerned at the minute, there's no excuse to leave your dogs in that state with, with nothing. I mean, they didn't even have the fundamental water or a, a bed. You know, it's, uh, there's no excuse at the minute for me. The vets have already said they'll support a Section 9 offence, which means that the needs haven't been met. And then we'll just take it from there and we'll see what our prosecutions department say. Turner and Hooch will be fed little and often whilst they're nursed back to health. And with plenty of TLC, Helen is convinced that the brothers will blossom. They're beautiful, beautiful temperament. To go through what they've gone today, having been prodded and poked and starving and everything, and they've not once shown any sign of aggression. Good boy. They'll just be amazing, amazing pets. Go to sleep tonight knowing that they're warm and they're never going to be hungry again. Yes, this way. That's, no, my arm needs to be in my socket. We'll be back with Turner and Hooch later to find out if they can pile on the pounds. They certainly need to. And once they get settled into their new digs, another dog is in need of help. Right, Marley. Good morning, you dogs are at the RSPCA. Can I take your name, please? And when did you last see the dog? Over in Walthamstow, East London, Inspector Becky Bedson is responding to a vague call about a dog stranded on an island in a flood channel. A bit worried about it. It has been really, really cold, it's a very frosty morning, um, and they think the dog's been there all night, so we're a little bit worried about it. It's the local council's responsibility to find and collect strays. Of course it's permit holders only. But if the RSPCA are worried about a dog's welfare, they'll step in. Monday to Friday, 8 till 6.30, two hours. We're going to have to go on a little adventure, I think, to find this dog. Doing this job, you never know what you're going to find. I mean, I've been called to teddy bears um, on the side of the road. You're aware of the fact that it could be anything, so it could turn into a wild goose chase. That's a swan. Stick to dogs. The caller was on a train when the dog was spotted, so they were unable to give an exact location. I can't see any sort of island or anything that a dog could be stuck on. I don't know if I'm looking in the wrong place. I can't see there's an island anywhere around here. It's the middle of winter, and if a dog is stranded, wet and cold, hypothermia could set in. Uh... Already, something's in Becky's way. OK. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to give the, these people a call, see if they can let me in. Oh, hi, yeah. Calling from the RSPCA. We've had a call to say that there's a dog stranded on an island in the river, river somewhere, but I can't get access to the river because it's, um, the gates are padlocked. And I wondered how I can get in to have a look. Thank you. OK. Thankfully, someone from the Environment Agency is nearby to let Becky in. But even if there is a dog on this stretch of water, finding it isn't going to be easy. 
can have a little look up and down the river, but I can't really see that there's any dry land for it to be standing on, so I'm not really sure what the call has seen, to be honest. <laughs> See, it could have been standing on there, couldn't it? With sketchy directions and no sign of a dog, Becky is starting to lose hope. It was 9 o'clock this morning, so it was a while ago. And chances are, it's not there anymore. I mean, that's dry. There, isn't it? It's really shallow here. It's just... But just as she's about to give up, she spots something. There. They're definitely dog footprints, they are. Well, there's evidence to say it was here. When you know that there's definitely a dog that needs help, it becomes a serious, potentially dangerous situation. It's like a, a switch is flipped in your mind. Everything that you do then from that point on is to find that dog. You're not going to leave it. You're going to get it out one way or another. We'll be back with Becky on the trail of this missing mutt soon. But for now, we're heading up to Merseyside, where Inspector Anthony Joins is following up on a job a colleague was called to a few weeks ago. Apparently, the dog was underweight, obviously not to the point where it needed immediate intervention. We just go back and see what we find. You've got to hope for the dog's welfare, that the person's increased the feed and the dog's improved in condition. If the dog's condition is still poor, Anthony may have no option but to propose removing it. My colleague was here, wasn't she, a few weeks ago? Can I come in? The dog is a one-year-old Dalmatian called Pepper and looks in good enough shape. She looks not too bad. But the owner fears she can't give her everything she needs. They're just so demanding, aren't they? So have you, have you really struggled to sort of get her long walks and stuff? A fully grown dog like Pepper needs at least an hour's walk a day, which she's not getting. So the owner agrees to sign her over. Take care, all right? All right. Come on, then, buddy. Let's go. And this pepped up Dalmatian has already won Anthony over. It's Pepper. She's beautiful, isn't she? She's still a little bit lean, but she's followed the advice and she put weight on the dog. She's struggling, really. She's got a young child and another one on the way. So she put the dog's welfare first. It's on to pastures new for Pepper. Um, which, and she'll be absolutely fine. I mean, look at her. I'd re her in a heartbeat if I could, if my dog would accept her. Next challenge is to get her into the kennel, because I don't think she's going to want to go in. I don't think she's ever been in a car before. I've never picked one up, to be honest. She's absolutely stunning, though. Aren't you? Aren't you? Yes, you are. So Pepper's got an admirer in Anthony, and could it be she thinks he's a bit of all right, too? Oh, that's disgusting. Her hero sweeps her off her feet. He's whisking her off to the local animal centre. Sometimes you pick up a dog, you think, oh, would she fit in my house? <laughs> I'm just thinking, oh, God, would Bella accept her? But I don't think my Bella would. But I think she'll make somebody, somebody who's so lucky to have her. I'm going to speak to the animal centre manager quickly. At the centre, word soon spreads about the latest arrival. What is it? It's unbelievable. Honestly, she's beautiful. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, hi. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh. Hi, Claudine. Oh, you're lovely. Oh, I'll take I'm, her home. I'm going to need her home. <laughs> I'll shift fly out. And Pepper looks happy to be the centre of attention. Oh, that's such an army of people bringing a dog in with me. Before she goes to kennels, Anthony takes her for a much needed run around. 
hopefully we'll find her a family really quickly that just want to adore her, really, and, and take her for long walks. She's an she's amazing, amazing dog. She's just, just got a lovely temperament. Go on, go on. Dalmatians are born white. Their spots only appear three to four weeks later. What? Huh? Oh, well done. And like all dogs, without the right care and training, they can also be rather a handful. Go on. <laughs> so now she's at the centre, Peppa will be getting more of the stimulation she needs. Come on, sis. We've got in at the right time before problems are risen, when there, when there probably would have been a problem further down the line. So it's nice. It's quite, it's quite refreshing, actually. Oh, constantly getting covered in slobber. Once Peppa's been chipped, spayed and vaccinated, she'll be ready to find her forever home, which shouldn't take long. Oh, yes. It's really good, that was. Beautiful dog. Right, let's go and cool down a bit. Let's go and cool down. Come on. We'll catch up with Dalmatian Pepper later. Also coming up, an incredible tale of survival for Olive, a heavily matted Shih Tzu. She just looks a complete state. I haven't seen a dog look that bad and still be alive. And the pressure's on for Inspector Becky Bedson to find a missing dog. The um, Environment Agency doesn't seem to think he's got anywhere to get out, so it should still be there. So hopefully we're going to find him. In January 2016, Inspector Steph Law was involved in a particularly upsetting case. I got a phone call from Southridge Animal Centre saying that a dog had been brought into them by a member of public and that the dog was in a complete state. Left to fend for herself, Olive, a little Shih Tzu, was found behind a pile of bricks on a building site in Hemel Hempstead. When I saw Olive um, for the first time, I was really, really upset. Her coat was really badly matted, and she had terrible infections in her eyes and her ears. She was obviously in a lot of pain. She was already on uh, quite a high dose of morphine and antibiotics, and she was just totally unresponsive. The vet needed to sedate Olive to examine her, and it was only when her fur was clipped that the full extent of her injuries was revealed. After Olive was shaved, you could see how badly infected her skin was. She had massive swellings around her head and her neck. Her eyes were so badly swollen. She just looks a complete state. I haven't seen a dog look that bad and still be alive, to be honest. I just felt really, really sorry for her. And the fact someone could just leave her in that state, it, it really upset me. Olive needed a course of antibiotics to treat the painful abscesses on her face and neck, as well as for a severe ear infection and nasty eye ulcers. While she recovered, a nurse from the veterinary clinic fostered her. Fast forward four months... Come on! ..and Olive's foster home has become her forever home. Vet nurse Emily Brown couldn't part with her and has given this two-year-old cutie a new name, Betty. She looks like a little old lady, so we just wanted to give her, no offence to any Bettys out there, but we just wanted to give her a little old lady name, so we called her Betty. For Emily, it was love at first sight, despite Betty not looking her best. She was just broken. She just seemed exhausted, the things she must have gone through. And I just knew she had to come home with me. She was really timid and quiet and really fragile. And then slowly over time, you could see her character coming back. She was just starting to trust us all more. But yeah, once her eyes were better, she was a whole new dog. <laughs> and it seems Emily has a habit of taking her work home with her. I rescue a lot of animals. We've got five cats and two ferrets as well. So Betty's got herself a ready-made family, including a new big brother, 15-year-old Shih Tzu Cross, Benji. Betty is obsessed with Benji. 
she absolutely loves Benji. If they're apart for a long time, Betty gets really upset. But they're never apart for too long, which is very sweet. And Benji must be delighted to have a new little sister to play with. At first, when they first start playing, Benji's really up for it. And he's, like, trying to tackle her back, but then he just tires out quicker, and then she wins every time. Right. Round two. She's really happy now, because she's always got someone with her. Um, and she's snoring. <laughs> that poor old chap must be exhausted after all that wrestling. But Betty's still full of life. Sit. Oh. <laughs> a good girl. She's um, really sassy, and she's got such a cute personality. Yeah. <laughs> She's just perfect. I don't know how anybody could have treated her the way they did. She's just incredible. <laughs> the person who dumped Betty has never been traced, but with a loving new home, Betty has landed on her feet. On her side. Back in East London, Inspector Becky Bedson is on the hunt for a missing dog. They're definitely dog footprints, they are. With fresh tracks to follow, she's joining the Environment Agency to drive along the Flood Relief Channel. Hopefully we'll get a really good view, because the problem where we were walking is you can't really see directly off the bank. So it'd be really good to be sort of in the middle of the river to be able to see. The dog's definitely been there, because we can see its footprints, and the um, Environment Agency doesn't seem to think he's got anywhere to get out, so it should still be there. So hopefully we're going to find him. It's been four hours since the dog was spotted. If it's been stranded in the freezing water overnight, it could have developed hypothermia. How far down are we now then from where we were? Come on. When you know there's a dog that needs help and the situation is potentially quite dangerous, you start to get a bit apprehensive. Your blood starts pumping and it can be quite nerve wracking. You never know what you're going to find. The anticipation sort of builds, and you, then you start to think, you know, if I got everything I need, how am I going to rescue this dog? Oh, there it is. That yeah, straight ahead. Quite looks quite distressed. King, an adult German Shepherd security dog got lost and stranded during the night. And a perilous rescue attempt is underway by the men he works with. There's some people are, um, obviously trying to help it out of the river at the minute. With such high walls, it's easy to see how he got trapped. How deep is the water? It's about two, three inches. So I can walk in it with my wellies. Yeah. Poor King has been through a terrible ordeal. Lost and alone, he must have thought he'd never be rescued. The dog's very, very frightened. These people know it, so I'm just going to get one of them to come down and try and put the lead on for me so that we can take it. it apparently, it's friendly, but it's, it's very distressed, so... Come on, it's OK. Can you put the lead on? Hey, good boy. He's fine. He's a bit stressed, a bit wet and cold, but he's super friendly, so I'm, I'm pleased. We'll bring him up the river. Yes, I'm just going to walk him out because he's a bit big and he's a bit stressed, and I don't really want to have to try and manhandle him into a van. So I'm just going to walk him up. It's just there. Come on. Becky's taking the dog-friendly route home. When you've done a successful rescue, it's the best feeling in the world. Good boy. You're doing good. It's just great. It puts you on cloud nine, you know, you skip home that day and, and feel like you've done a great job, so it's brilliant. Up, up, up. Good boy. He's a lovely dog. He's quite friendly, but super scared, so I don't know how long he's been down there for, but he's cut his paws, trying to jump out. Luckily, there's only a couple of inches of water. If it had been any deeper, he, you know, could have been really serious for him. That rescue was one in a lifetime. I mean, 
I'll never ever forget it. It was there were so many ways it could have gone, and it just went perfectly. So it was yeah, it was one of the best things I've done as an inspector. If your dog gets lost, your chances of being reunited are greatly improved if they're microchipped, and it's now a legal requirement. So I'm meeting animal care assistant Lily Gallup to find out more. So Lily, tell me about a microchip. How does it work? This is an example of what they look like. Oh, OK. So they're, ti they're tiny weeny things. Let's have a look at that. Ooh. <laughs> it's done with a microchip gun. So you just put a needle on the end there. And then we have to pop it in under their skin. And they don't even know they've got it in. Mm. You don't even know you've got it in. <laughs> and we use a scanner just to make sure that it's stayed in correctly. So how do I find that? So if you press this, that this side little button. Bit, yeah, and usually it's on the back of their neck. It can sometimes be in their legs, so it's always important to scan their whole body. Where's your chip gone? Try taking your finger off. Have you got your finger down? Yeah, try... Yeah. If you just press it once, then try scan sort of lower. I'm not very good with technology. <laughs> There we go. There. Oh, I found you. It's there. <laughs> it's there. I've got your number. There's a lot of noughts in it. You are chipped. And ready to find a home. Well, Marley, these are a brilliant idea. Let me just... I'm going to go and get three of these for my kids. Thanks, Lily. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Let's go. Earlier, Inspector Anthony Joins rescued Dalmatian Pepper. It's Pepper. She's beautiful, isn't she? Her owner couldn't cope with the responsibilities a dog brings, so signed her over for rehoming. Hopefully we'll find her a family really quickly that just want to adore her, really, and, and take her for long walks. Now, six months on, Anthony's hopes have become reality. She's found her forever home with retired couple Jane and Richard Jones but it nearly didn't happen. Jane said I couldn't have another dog because it would outlive me. <laughs> you can laugh, but that's what you said. <laughs> but Jane had a good reason for changing her mind. I knew we had to get a dog to, to get him moving, basically. Went to the RSPCA in Wallasey, and we walked in, and they said, oh, you're out of luck. We've had a good week. They've all gone except for that one in there. Pepper turned out to be their one and only. I saw her, fell in love with her straight away. Jane was filling in the form, and I'm saying, quick, 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 I'm scared somebody was going to walk in the door and beat us to it. <laughs> Instant love. Couldn't wait to get her, get her home and get to know her. She's very loving, she's very intelligent, and she's well-behaved, isn't she? If you, she's apart from the apple pie. Apart from the apple pie that she helped herself off the worktop. But well, that was his fault because he left it near the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me Pepper is the apple of their eyes. She doesn't answer back. I can tell her anything and she doesn't tell me off. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what you mean. <laughs> OK. Pepper now gets them out and about. Hup and sit. And they've even joined a doggy walking group. Which is always a social occasion. Hiya. Hi. Hello, Keith. Hello, Keith. Keith. Hello, Keith. Yes, Pepper's mates include Keith, the Golden Lab, and Arnie, the Poodle, as well as Jake, Hetty, Betty, Tatty, the Spaniel. Oh, and we mustn't forget Bon Bon, the Chihuahua. And they and their humans all get on famously. When Pepper was rescued, she wasn't getting anywhere near the amount of exercise she needed. But that's all changed. Come on, Pep. Come on, Peppy. Well, they need a lot of exercise. She certainly does. And you never feel as though you've worn her out. She was ready to go again any time. The thing that Pepper loves more than anything is to socialise with other dogs. And with the group, there's always at least one that she can tear around and enjoy. Even the littlest of them will have a go. Bon Bon's chasing up. She's such a happy, happy dog. 
Who's my baby? Who's my baby? Peppa. For Peppa and her owners, it's a new and happy life. She's, she's just perfect in every way. I just can't fault her. She's exactly what we needed. It's almost as if she's saying, this is my second chance. I'm not going to screw this one up. Because she's been so brilliant. She really has. Terrific dog. Coming up, we catch up with Boney brothers Turner and Hooch to find out how their recovery is going. Have they managed to pile on the pounds? When I first saw them in the garden, they were just so skinny. Hopefully they'll have improved now. And have you got a dog-shaped hole in your life? Well, stick around, because we might have the perfect one for you. Oh, my goodness, look at you two. Look how skinny you two are. Earlier, Inspector Helen Smith rescued two painfully thin dog to Bordeaux, Turner and Hooch. We're getting out of here, guys. Come on. Their ravenous appetites suggested it was malnutrition causing their poor condition. Starving. <laughs> but just to make sure, vet Vanessa Whitfield took blood samples. But I want to rule out there's not an underlying disease. That was eight weeks ago, and today Helen is on her way to see how they're getting on. Really looking forward to seeing Turner and Hooch. When I first saw them in the garden, they were just so skinny. Hopefully they'll have improved now. Helen's been unable to track down Turner and Hooch's owner, but since they've been rescued, they've been staying at Halewood Animal Centre in Liverpool. Helen's arrived just in time for one of Turner's daily walks. Oh, my God! Come here! Hey, hello! Hello, Turner! Look at you! You look amazing! And all your ribs have disappeared, which is fab. <laughs> she's fabulous. You look amazing. God, he's like a different dog. And he's obviously put loads of weight on, so obviously the feeding's worked. That's fantastic. And he's much calmer now. Animal care assistant Karen Bohanna has been looking after Turner. He just needs love and affection, and I think he'll be a nice, well-rounded pet, yeah. Yeah. Do you take regular weigh-ins? Yes, twice a week. Oh, right, OK. So every, every three to four days. Okay. So shall we go and weigh him and find out how much he's put on since when I brought him in? Yeah, yeah. we can go weigh him. The blood test confirmed that Turner and Hooch were simply underfed, so they've been put on a special diet, which includes a high-protein puppy food to help Baby. bulk them up. Come on, then, let's see how much you weigh now. And it seems to have done the job. <laughs> Turner was just over 30 kilos when Helen rescued him. How about now? 41. 41 kilograms. Wow. God, 11 kilos. Good lad. Turner looks terrific, but how's Hooch getting on? So I'll get Hooch, cos oh, yeah, he Pam. needs weighing next time. OK, him. fabulous. Okay. Go back, Turner. Good boy. Hi. Come on, sweetheart. Hooch, the bigger of the brothers, was even thinner. Um, the body condition score is very, very poor. He's lost a lot of muscle mass. Now he's Hooch the Hulk. Oh, my goodness! <laughs> Look at you! Oh, he's massive! <laughs> you are massive! He's a big boy. I can't believe the difference in him. He, you could see every single rib when, yeah. when I brought him in. And now he's just. I'd love to see how much weight he put on. Hooch was around 40 kilos when he was rescued. 55 kilograms. 55 kilograms now. Oh, my goodness me. Good lad. That is loads of weight, <laughs> isn't it? Should we go for a walk, Hooch? Should we go for a walk? Hooch was so emaciated that some of the muscle on his legs wasted away, and it's a gradual process to build it back up. At the moment, we've got him on uh, three small walks a day. It's about giving him the exercise, but not letting him overstrain it. Yeah. And it will build up on its own. These walks seem to be doing him well. Yeah, and he loves time out on the field, yeah. Yeah. Should we let him off and yeah. let him have a run around? He's not quite Arnie yet. Go on, then. Go and have a run. But the big chap hasn't forgotten how to have a good time. Hey, 
Peach, Peach. Come here. <laughs> he's, more, he's just a gentle giant, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you nearly knocked me over! You nearly knocked me over! What are you doing? Have we tired you out? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's time for a nap. He's snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go? Come on, then. It's fantastic seeing Turner and Hooch. They have made such an improvement. They're absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really, really pleased. And their miraculous recovery is all thanks to Karen and the team at Howlwood Animal Centre. Bravo! As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life. But that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them. And there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Dolly, she's an eight-year-old Staffy. She has been in RSPCA label and care for six months now and she's looking for a new home. Good girl. Good girly. If I had to describe Dolly in three words, I'd say she's silly, lovable and energetic. Just loved rolling on her back, making her funny little noises. You lovely girl, aren't you? You go all silly, do you? She loves going over the jumps, like that. She's so smart, she wants to learn new things. Good girl, good girly. Dolly's looking for a home as the only pet, so she gets all the love and attention. It's really hard to understand why Dolly's been overlooked for so long. Some people would prefer to have a younger dog, but she is full of beans. She's amazing. <laughs> She's absolutely lovely. You've got to come and meet her. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Come on then, you old man. Come on. The amazing transformation of flea-infested Ben. There's thousands of fleas on this poor dog. His skin is literally crawling. Let's get a clip of the please. Please. You are so good. Molly, the tiny terrier, needs surgery to fix her broken heart. Without the surgery, there's a chance that, you know, she may not make it through this year. So uh, it really is going to be a lifesaver for her. And Bichon frees Chesney's owners face a big challenge if they want to keep him. At the moment, it's not suitable for the animals to stay. We will go back to the water. If you can clear up 